Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dr. Pradhan here. Welcome to NPTEL project on econometric modeling. So, today we will discuss a problem called as a dummy variable modeling. So, in the last couple of lectures, we have discussed the entire structure of econometric modeling that to bivariate, trivariate, multivariate, and we have also discussed various problems uh, with respect to econometric modeling that is you know multicollinearity, autocorrelation problem, heteroscedacity problem etc. Uh, so, today uh, today we will discuss uh, the concept uh, which we usually call as a dummy variable or you can say binary variable or you know uh, categorical variable. There are many names uh, with respect to dummy variables. So, it is a very interesting technique and uh, it is very useful and most of the you know areas it is uh, it has lots of applications. Uh, so, uh, let us we start with uh, what is exactly the structure of uh, dummy variable modeling and then we will uh, highlight some of the application uh, where we can apply this dummy variable. Okay. So, um, the starting point is that we have a, a we have a, a econometric modeling say like this y, uh, y i equal to summation beta i x i i equal to 1 to n. Uh, plus beta 0 plus uh, ui ok so uh, here i equal to 1 this is intercept this is slope coefficient and this is error term uh, and this is independent variable this is dependent variable this is how the model is classified ok and, uh, the problem is here uh, when we discuss something about to, you know there are many ways econometric modeling can be presented ok. First things we have discussed bivariate, trivariate and multivariate where the structure is that one dependent variable and there are uh, several uh, independent variables starting from one independent variable, two independent variable, three independent variable, you know four independent variables like this okay? or you can say kth independent variables. So, that means, keeping one dependent variable constant we are extending one after another independent variable. Then we are saying that it is bivariate, trivariate and multivariate like this. Okay. So, whatever may be the situations. So, when we have since one structure of econometric modeling is that where there is a one dependent variable and one or multiple independent variables. This is one way of you know highlighting the econometric modeling issue. Another way to represent the econometric modeling is that uh, we have several number of dependent variables and also in the same time there are several number of you can say independent variables ok. So, that means that is called as a or that in that scenario there is a, a um, means that is the situation of interdependence among various variables. So, in that structures there is no such a exact classification of you know dependent and independent, but to at the particular point of time we have to specify what are the dependent variable and what are the independent variables. Of course, uh, one dependent variable uh, sometimes one is independent variable to somebody else and so, you know same thing can be also independent variable to some dependent case. Okay. It is a very that is how it is called as interdependent. That means, if y, y is a function of you can say y 1 function of y 2 then obviously y 2 may be function of y 3 like this. So, it is a chain type situation. So, this is another structure of econometric modeling that is called as a uh, usually simultaneous equation modeling or you can say structural equation modeling. So, we will discuss little bit later on that aspect. So, what is all about the simultaneous equation modeling and structural equation modeling. So, so this is the second setup of econometric modeling. In the first setup one dependent with uh, one or many independent variable in the second structures with a many independent and many dependent variables. Okay. So, that means, it is interdependence among the various variables. So, base technique is a simultaneous equation modeling, structural equation modeling or you can say 
uh, there is advanced technique called as a factor analysis etc etc ok. Uh, the another st structure of modeling is that uh, 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 means another structure we usually find in this econometric modeling is that called as a dummy variable modeling. So, dummy variable can be in, in, in uh, can be divided into two parts like this dummy variable modeling dummy variable modeling basically divided into two parts as per the dependent structure as per the independent structure. So, that is called as a dummy dependent variable modeling dummy independent variables dummy independent variable modeling ok Indi dummy independent variable modeling. So, that means uh, you see here uh, in the third structures uh, means in the first structures let me highlight here in the first structures one dependent uh, ok let me uh, put it in other way ok uh, let me first highlight this structure then we will go to uh, this dummy technique uh, this structure is that so first case one one dependent you know uh, other side either one independent or multiple independent ok this is one structure and second structure is that uh, many dependent and many independent of course this is you can say situation 1 why I will call it situation 1 because here one of the standard assumption is that whatever variables let us say I, I will put like this way. So, it is nothing but uh, you know y 1, y 2, y 3 up to you can say y k this is x 1, x 2 up to say x k ok. So, this is independent classification this is dependent classification. So, uh, this is how we can represent. So, now 1 1 then this is simply uh, then 1 with 2 then it is called as a bivariate 1 with 3 multivariate. So, th this is how the structure is all about. So, now in this particular uh, uh, structures one of the standard assumption is that all the variables all the variables are quantitative in nature quantitative in nature that means it can be measured it can be expressed in terms of substantial quantity ok. For instance GDP, FDI, Forex these are all quantitative information if I will say uh, what is the GDP of a particular country, what is the GDP of a particular country for a particular year, then it is some quantitative figures ok. So, that is the way which we can discuss this you know bivariate, trivariate, multivariate and this simultaneous equation modeling or structural equation modeling. So, in addition to this particular pictures there is another case or we can call it a situation 2 in the case or case 2. So, here there is a, a another type of classification means assumption is that uh, some of the variables may be qualitative in nature. This in the first in the first case our standard assumption is that uh, uh, the variables are very much quantitative in nature. So, there is no co concept of qualitative, but basically variables basically variables are divided into two parts one is a quantitative and another is a qualitative ok. So, quantitative and qualitative quantitative means it can be expressed some number, some percentage, some ratio, etcetera, etcetera, and qualitative means it is just like a categorical variables or binary variable, or you can say uh, uh, dichotomous variables like this. Uh, this is how we have to uh, represent that situation. It is usually called as a proxy variables. Okay, so that means there is no direct quantitative information with respect to that variable. For instance, gender is a particular variables. Uh, if I will ask uh, what is the gender impact on something else, then obviously gender cannot be calculated in quantitative terms. So, uh, if I will say gender, then obviously the it structure is the male and female. So, that means only information if I collect in uh, data, then obviously I will ask you what is the gender. So, the respondent will simply re uh, you know reply either male or female. So, I will record a, uh, I will record accordingly on means in that particular structure for instance I have y something and I have x something and I have uh, x 1 something and x 2 something x 2 say uh, the variable gender 
then I will ask you suppose this is respondent 1, okay, respondent 1, this is respondent uh, respondent 2 like this it will continue. So, uh, in that structure suppose uh, uh, I will ask respondent 1 what is your y cell it is let us say it is income levels, okay. As you get, uh, x1 say it is you can say yes uh, uh, educational levels, okay, educational levels, okay. Then obviously I will ask you first what is your income then obviously he will simply say that something else say 100 dollars or you can say 200 dollars or you can say 150 dollars or you can say 250 dollars. So, like that it will continue. So, then I ask the respondent against what is your educational qualification. Then obviously, we have standard structure of educational qualification let us say undergraduate, postgraduate or you can say uh, matriculations or you can say PhD etcetera. So, accordingly you have to record here. So, let us say this is a this is guy is called as a uh, MSc, okay. So, this is guy called as a you can say uh, BTEC, okay. Uh, uh, then this is guy you can say PhD, okay. This is called as a MS. So, so, this is how we have to call it data. Similarly, genders. If I ask the gender, then he will simply say male or female, male or female like this, okay. So, that means now if I will fit a regression like this y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 then obviously uh, 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 this is original original model so we need to have estimated models y head equal to beta 0 head plus beta 1 head x1 plus beta 2 head x2 uh, okay so now to transfer one equation to uh, equation 1 to equation 2 we need uh, information so information must be or uh, till now whatever we have discussed information must be in quantitative shape. So, that accordingly we will put this formula and we will get the beta 0 head, beta 1 head and beta 2 head. Then accordingly we have to go for you know the testing of you know of, uh, significance of these parameters and overall fitness of the models and other uh, similar type of problems like multicollinearity, heteroscedacity, autocorrelation etcetera etcetera. But you know if variables are not in quantitative way then obviously it is very difficult to Oh, you can say calculate beta 0, beta 1, beta 2 because it is more just you know way of mathematics only. So, we, we have a beta 0 formula, we have beta 1 formula, we have beta 2 formula. So, accordingly we need to have some information like you know we need summation y square, summation x square, summation y x 1, summation y x 2. If something is very uh, in qualitative, these are all called qualitative information. So, now I cannot just multiply this one. So, to multiply this one then I have to transfer this qualitative information to quantitative information. So, the way we will transfer the qualitative information to quantitative information is called as a you can say one way of uh, representing the dummy variable modeling. So, dummy variable means it is a proxy variable it is called it is used as a proxy variables and where the variable cannot be expressed in terms of some quantity. Okay. So, it is purely qualitative variable. So, we use the, we, the first structure is we have to collect the qualitative information, then we transfer the qualitative information into some form of quantitative information, then we can go for its estimation. For instance, if I will here male female items are there. So, instead of male female, male female, I it denote you know male is 1 or female is 2 or male equal to 0 or female female equal to 1. Then obviously, I will transfer uh, instead of male, I will put you know I will just replace uh, you know control F then put to M then transfer uh, replace to you can say 0 then all M will do uh, replace to you can say 0. Similarly, female so I will put again control F uh, you know F then I will replace to 1. So, then obviously, this particular column will transfer the entire qualitative information to some form of quantity information where the information is more, more or less binary in nature. Okay. Similarly, uh, you know education also. So, there are 4 degree here. So, I will put 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. 1 for MSc, BTEC for uh, 2 for BTEC, 3 for MS, 4 for PhD. Then accordingly, I will replace uh, instead of all MSc, I will put 1 instead of all BTEC, I will put 2 instead of MS, I will put 3 instead of PhD, I will put 4. So, then you will transfer into qualitative uh, quantitative information. After that, you, uh, estimation is as usual the standard formula, form, uh, standard process which we have discussed uh, okay, uh, long back. Okay. So, now this the way you will transfer this qualitative, uh, qualitative variables to quantitative variable is very top class job. Okay. So, uh, this, the way we will design that structure is called as a dummy variable modeling. Okay. So, that means 
So, in situation 2, situation 1 which we have discussed is more or less, uh, uh, more or less uh, means in that particular case, uh, the one of the standard assumption is that variables are quantitative in nature. So, here uh, 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 means uh, the moment we will go for uh, this is otherwise called as a qualitative response e e econ econometric modeling. Okay. So, this dummy modeling otherwise known as qualitative response econometric modeling or you can say qualitative response <laughs> A regression modeling, okay. Qualitative response econometric modeling. So that means there are some kind, there is some kind of qualitative information you will see here. So now this is dependent classification, this is independent classification. Dependent classification can be one, can be many, okay. Independent class uh, classification can be one, can be many, okay. So we have already discussed this for steps. If it many many, then it is called as a structural equation modeling. If you know uh, 1 1, then it is simply bivariate econometric modeling. If, if it is 1 many, then it is called as a multivariate econometric modeling. So, this is how the structure we have already discussed. This is case 1 structure where all these information are quantitative, but this same same problem can be transferred into qualitative response econometric modeling. If uh, any one of the particular structures or a uh, few of them particular uh, in that particular setup is qual qualitative in nature. So, means the variable cannot be said as a quantitative variable, it is a qualitative variable. Okay. So, so, because the way we will transfer this, you know, statistical model into estimate means original model to st estimated model. So, you need to have information, the way we will, uh, the way we will process this information, then al ultimately we will get the estimated model. So, that is how the information must be quantitative in nature, because ultimately we, we will process it mathematically. So, that we will get the estimated value okay, uh, or estimated equation. So, that is how you need all these quantitative information. So, computer will or software will not read all these qualitative information. So, you have to buy who can crook you to transfer this qualitative information to quantitative information. Of course, there is a uh, there are certain variables which cannot be expressed directly in terms of quantity. That is how the researcher researcher has to play main role. So, he he has to find out some criteria how to transfer this qualitative variable to quantitative form because uh, most of the problems uh, and where where the variables cannot be purely quantitative. So, there is a qualitative variable. So, that in that particular context the problem is very complex and in that context researcher's rule is very very tough or very very high. So, he has to be a, I mean, she has to perform very well to transfer this quantitative, qualitative information to quantity information. So, now in the situation 2, the situation 1 which we have discussed already, in that case, the, you know, there are several uh, structures again. So, that means, here we have uh, in the situation say, say uh, dependent classification and independent classification. So, now let us assume that this is, uh, you know, y is only, uh, uh, only one structure, okay, then it is uh, here. Uh, you can say in both the side it may be quantitative information, it may be qualitative information, this may be quantitative information and qualitative information. That means, uh, you will find a dependent classification is a quantitative and independent classification is a both quantitative and qualitative. Okay. It may be also quantitative and qualitative only, it may be quantity quantity, quantity quantity which we have already discussed, but quantity quality and it is also quality, then quantity quality, then quality quality uh, or quantity quality, these are all called as a dummy variable modeling, dummy variable modeling. So, that means, uh, the agenda is here is that, uh, whether uh, means there, there must be at least one variable which should be qualitative in nature. So, that, that we have to, you, you, we will artificially transfer into some quantity form. So, in that structures means uh, when there is a question of dummy variable modeling, so the, there is a, a either the, uh, means there is a one dummy variables or you can say several dummy variables. If it is a one dummy variable, then uh, you must be very careful whether it is a dummy dependent or dummy independent. If there are many dummy variables, then again you have to see how many are dummy dependent, how many are dummy independent. Because the structure or you can say mathematical, mathematical setup is a little bit different. Of course, the theoretical representation is very much uh, 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 certain, but uh, uh, you know mathematical derivation is a little bit 
different. So, as a result, so you have to be very careful about it. So, that, that means in the moment you will uh, handle this type of modeling, in the first hand you have to see what are the variables or dummy variables, ok. And the second, uh, second question is that how many variables, how many dependent variables are dummy dependent and how many independent variables are dummy dependent, ok, uh, sorry dummy independent. So, accordingly you have to proceed, uh, but uh, we start with a simple model, the simple dummy variable modeling is that. So, there should be it, uh, you know dependent co dependent variable which is very much quantitative in nature and there is a, at least one uh, you know independent variable which is a dummy in nature. So, okay. so, that means this is the basic or easiest way to represent the dummy variable modeling. So, the complexity will, uh, uh, complexity will start when there is a one after another dummy variable, dummy independent variable introduced in the system, the, the way we have discussed in the case of multicollinearity. So, that means the starting point is that, so like this, uh, the simplest structure of dummy variable is that, so uh, you know dom dummy variable modeling, a uh, simplest structure is that, it is a uh, dependent variables and function of independent variables. Okay. So, now here, uh, here we will assume that this is a quantitative information, independent variables. So, some are quantitative and some are qualitative, even uh, quantitative qualitative it is ok also. Okay. So, that means quantitative as a function of qualitative it is ok or quantitative as a function of quantitative and qualitative. This is also ok, but uh, uh, this quantitative qualitative this, this is somewhat actually a little bit also complex, but the simplest or you know best procedural uh, best structure of a uh, variable modeling is in that particular format. Most of the problems you will handle in this particular uh, issue where there is a one uh, independent variable which is quantitative in nature and and in another side there is at least one dummy depend, dummy independent variable. So, that means uh, in the right side few variables must be quantitative in nature and few variables are qualitative in nature. So, uh, among the few quality qualitative variable it may be one, it may be multiple. So, if it is one uh, or in the case of multiple the structure is accordingly designed. Okay. So, we will discuss in details how is that particular setup. So, now uh, first thing is what is dummy, dummy variable. So, dummy variable is, a uh, is usually called as a binary variable which usually use as a proxy for other variables. So, that is how the definition of dummy variable. So, there are uh, various names related to dummy variables. So, you can say binary variable, categorical variable, response variable, dichotomous variables. So, there is so many ways we have to represent the dummy variable. So, in any case the problem is more or less same. So, you just know the methodology or structure then uh, everything will follow up accordingly. Okay. So, now what is all about this dummy variable modeling? So, the standard uh, what we will discuss here is okay, we start with the, uh, we start with this concept called as a uh, dummy depend uh, dummy uh, independent structure first that to you know one dummy independent where one dummy uh, in a one dependent variable only. So, this is the, uh, the simplest structure, the simplest structure is that you know y equal to alpha plus beta x okay, uh, plus gamma d. Okay. So, that means this is the simplest structure of simplest structure of you can say dummy variable modeling. This is the dummy variable modeling that is independent dummy. Then this is the dependent variable this is independent variable, this is dummy variable. Okay. So, this, part, uh, this particular me measurement is quantitative, this particular measurement is quantitative, this particular measure is qualitative. Okay. It may be 0, 1, it may be 1, 2, 3 or it may be like this 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 like this. Okay. Let us say this is gender is best cited example. This is a seasonal uh, effect is another uh, another cited example or you can say time periods, different time periods is another cited example and this is with respect to different colors, different regions, different countries, different states, this is how it can be classified. Okay. So, that means you see here, let us say I will see, I will see here, what is the sales volume with respect to uh, you know uh, product shape this pen. Okay. 
So, now what, the, what is the sales of this sales volume of this pen? So, that means we have to know what are, what are the factor which can influence sales volume. Let us say x, x is the one variable obviously the amount of sales depends upon price of sale or you can say advertising in, involved in this particular pen. So, that means it is quantitative in nature. Then there is a variable called as a dummy variable. So, dummy variables that means we like to know uh, you know uh, when a particular company sells is forecasting, uh, your agenda is to forecast the sales of a particular company and obviously uh, uh, let us assume that your company, is a, company has a several branches across the country. So, that means you like to know which particular city is more effective and more significant than the others. So, in that case, so you have to accordingly introduce a dummy variable that is you can call as a regional effect. So, now uh, uh, suppose there are 5 different cities are there your product is going. So, which particular city is more uh, uh, more significant with respect to your sale. So, in that case you have to use for dummies. Okay. So, suppose sales from south then you will put called D equal to 1. Then uh, you know sales from you can say north you will put D equal to 2. Then sales from you can say west then you will put D equal to 3. If sales from east then you will put you can say D equal to 4. Like this, you have to transfer the ent uh, entire sales uh, sales component. So accordingly, if you go by regress, uh, you know estimation. So these variables cannot be say south, north, east, west. Cannot be you can say estimated directly. So what you have to do, you have to transfer all these information to quantity information. For instance, uh, you just denote south means one, uh, north means two, or uh, west means three, east means four. So accordingly, you transfer all the south, west, uh, uh, south, uh, you know. Uh, north, east, west in, term, in, term, uh, in terms of 1, 2, 3, 4. Then you go for estimation, obviously you will get the uh, better result. Okay. So, this is the simplest structure of dummy. Uh, so, now uh, I, I will put you with the general framework of dummy. So, then we will come to a specific form. So, the general framework of dummy is that, uh, okay, before I highlight the general framework of dummy, okay, let me first highlight here. So, let y equal to y equal to summation beta i x i okay, uh, uh, i equal to 1 to n plus summation gamma i d i uh, i equal to 1 to n okay, plus beta 0 plus u. Okay. So, this is the generalized format of qualitative response. Uh, regression modeling, qualitative response, uh, regression modeling or econometric modeling with independent uh, dummy, with independent dummy. Okay, so that means it is, it is the dummy independent variable econometric modeling. Okay, dummy independent variable econometric modeling. So that means here y is always remain same. Okay, so now you are just adding one after another variable in the systems in the form of uh, quantitative or in the form of qualitative. So, obviously, R square will be substantially high because Y is remain constant and now uh, uh, the moment you will uh, introduce one after another variable whether it is in the form of direct X or in the form of dummy, then obviously, your R square will approach to very high and F will approach to very high. But in the same time, so when you will introduce one after another variable uh, like time series analysis, then obviously by introduction uh, time series analysis with a lag introduction. So uh, similarly here, if you enter x or corresponding uh, x or we can say dummy, then obviously R square by default R square will increase, F will increase. That means model uh, model overall fitness will fitness uh, will be uh, high or increase because you are increasing a simple model to you know multivariate model. So when we will handle multivariate model, then obviously most of the cases r square will be substantially high okay and you know f will be substantially high but the main problem is that whatever variables you are introducing all these variables should be significant okay otherwise uh, it is unnecessary to introduce any particular variable what we have learned from multiple linearity so let us say that there are five different variables so three are you can say quantity variables and two are qualitative variables so now out of all these variables, so we have to first go through original regression introducing all these variables, but by default if you go by all these variables without to initial test, uh, initial any testing, then obviously some variable may be significant and some variables may be non-significant. So in that case, 
but uh, R square will be very high and F will be very high. In such a situation, what you have to do? So, we have to check what is the highest percentage uh, influence on uh, means a particular variable which has the highest influence on Y. So, that means in that case, uh, you if you will follow the path of multiple linearity, then Y has to be regressed through this first uh, high impact variable. Then subsequently, you will introduce uh, second impact uh, important variable. Then every time we will check it uh, by introducing one after another, R square must be significant, R square must be very high, substantially increase or adjusted R square will substantially increase, F will start increasing substantially and in the same time, so whatever variables you are introducing that must be significant. Okay, so, uh, yes, of course, uh, uh, the significance level may vary. So, it may be instead of in the first case, if it is at the 1 percent, the second case it may be 5 percent or you can say it may be 10 percent, but we have to go up to 10 percent. Then you see, uh, after introducing uh, uh, one after another independent variable in the system, then two things must be, uh, you must be taken care. First thing is, you, uh, whatever variables you are introducing in the system one after another, then that variable must be significant and, this, uh, uh, and it should not see affect the significance of other variables. Okay, This is the number one important thing. And second thing is that the overall fitness of a model will be of substantially high and adjusted R square will be substantially high, F will be substantially high. By any chance, if you are introducing one after another variable and by the way, uh, you know, significance level of the parameter is get uh, affected and in the same times, you know, F statistic is also getting affected, then it is better not to introduce that particular uh, variable. So, so uh, one after another variable will introduce as long as R square will increase, F will increase and param all parameters in whatever parameters involved in the particular system, current system. So, it has to be a, uh, it, it has to be significant. Okay. So, now when will you put here qualitative response med qualitative response econometry modeling in general format? So, this is how you have to represent. Okay. So, now with this particular structure, so you can go for very simple structure, you can go for very uh, complex structure. For instance, I I will take uh, you know just uh, i equal to 1, okay, i equal to 1, i in fact sample size, but uh, here I am putting different way. So, y, y equal to uh, 1 means, so it is nothing but beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus uh, uh, you know d 1 x 1, okay, plus u. So, this is the simplest uh, for a structure of you can say dummy variable. So, now if we put i equal to 2, then obviously the system will be beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus d 1 x 1 plus d 2 x 2, okay, d 2 x 2. So, this is how it can be extended some subsequent substantially. So, if I will put i equal to 3 a, then obviously the system will be beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta k a plus d 1 x x 1 plus d 2 x 2 plus d 3 x 3 and obviously here we will add beta 3 x 3 plus u ok plus u. So, this is how it will extend substantially ok. So, that means uh, uh, this is generalized formula. So, mathematical if you put to allow 1 1 then it is the structure if you allow 2 2 2 means 2 independent variable quantitative independent variable and 2 qualitative independent variable. Similarly, i equal to 3 means you are introducing a system with the 3 quantitative variable and 3 qualitative variables like d 2 d 1 d 2 d 3 ok. Similarly, beta 1 uh, x 1 x 2 x 3. So, now you know uh, if you will introduce you one after another variables then one thing you must means two things you must be very careful the variables which you include in the system it should be significant and by the way by with by the process of a significance level. So, others should not affect their significance level. If a uh, introducing of another variable new variables if the overall significance of the variable is increasing and uh, significance of individual parameter is also increased then you are in the right track. But if you are in uh, after introduction of uh, new variables if the uh, other variables are drastically in the negative side and getting affected the overall fitness of the model then in that case uh, it is better to stop that variable we should not introduce that variable in the system. So, this is how we have to extend the structure of bivari uh, you know uh, dummy variable econometric modeling. Okay. So, now 
now obvious question is why it happens this particular structure and why, is it essential or is it that means we like to know what is the nature and consequence of this particular modeling ok. So, the nature I have already explained. So, the nature means uh, obviously it is a system where uh, few variables are quantitative and few variables are qualitative. So, that is the nature. So, that is how the wave, uh, but regression will not effective if a system consists of both quantitative information and qualitative information. So, of course, initially you have quantitative information and qualitative information, but when will you go for its estimation, the moment you will enter to the estimation process. So, that times you must uh, uh, in you, you must have a file where you know all these information should be quantitative in nature. So, ok. If not then your first job is you transfer this qualitative variable to quantitative variables. The way like this I have uh, I have given you a problem which we have discussed earlier BAC, IIP, uh, money supply, wholesale price index and ex exchange rate. So, I will put to, uh, one fa factor that seasonal effect let us say there is another factor we will introduce seasonal factor or else uh, this is the time series analysis. So, let us say the time periods which uh, the information which we have right now is say 1992-2009. Then I like to know what is the impact of global financial crisis ok or you can say what is the impact of Asian, Asian financial crisis on this particular uh, uh, inflation rate or India's money supply. So, in that case, so you have to see what is the impact means. So, you have to introduce the dummy variables ok. So, that means, so if you say uh, Asian financial crisis in 1996, then you know keeping 1996 uh, remain constant or one level. So, you have to change accordingly. For instance, so up to up to you know 1996, you have to put you say 1 1 1 uh, or 0 0 0 then other one you will put 1 1 1 1. So, that means it will give you the signal of the impact of you know uh, fi Asian financial crisis. Now, if that particular coefficient is significant, so that means there is such uh, there is such variation with respect to that dummy variable. Otherwise, if not significant that means there is no such impact. So, if it is significant then obviously, Asian financial crisis has an impact on you can say money supply or you can say inflation otherwise it is not true. So, just we are theoretical assuming uh, uh, yes theoretical assuming means there is some minor level of impact. So, if there is a minor level of impact it, it should not be considered uh, at a higher level uh, that to at the statistical way. So, uh, you must be very careful about uh, all these issues. So, now basically when will you go for uh, you may have any form of model. So, whether whether it is you know uh, cross sectional modeling or time series modeling or panel data modeling or you can say regression modeling. So, variable uh, two things are very important one is the variable choice variable classification and another is the, the information. So, ok information. So, so, that means, so the information must be always with you so that you can go for estimation. So, now if the variables are some variables are proxy and some variables are quantitative in nature that times you have uh, you have to do lots of things otherwise it is very difficult to you can say go to a particular conclusions or sometimes it cannot be possible to estimate until unless you transfer this qualitative information to quantitative information. So, this is the fundamental issue of you can say uh, uh, you can say this dummy variable econometric modeling. So, that means uh, it, it does not matter that the dummy variable modeling uh, it, it can be time series problem, it can be uh, cross sectional problem, it can be penal data problem. Obviously, the introduction of dummy may be with respect to cross sectional unit with respect to time series units. For instance, uh, uh, the way we, we have highlighted this is you know time series dummy, sometimes you know cross sectional dummy also there like say you know uh, regional effect, state level effect or you can say. Uh, something uh, other way gender effect etcetera these are the things which uh, dummy variable has to be uh, introduced and uh, the estimation can be captured through dummy variable technique only. So, this is how the basic starting point of this uh, 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 you know dummy variable economic thing. So, that means what we like to means why what are the things we like to know uh, uh, are that uh, uh, means uh, the, the variables which we are collecting usually may be quantitative may be qualitative if it is quantitative then it is very good for you. So, you need not uh, put any extra effort or extra labors, but if it is you know some qualitative informations are there. So,
some variables having qualitative informations are there, then that a contest you, 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 you have to play a fantastic role. That means, you have to design the transformation, appropriate transformation, then after that you have to estimate the model. Otherwise, computer will not directly read if you really use the software. Even if you know, uh, uh, you go by manually uh, or you can exam point of view, it is very difficult to handle this type of problem. because. If I will say, uh, 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 you know, what is the gender? Uh, gender is you say x, uh, x 2 variable and you know x 1 is you can say income variable. So, I cannot just multiply these two, it is very difficult. Means, mathematically, you cannot multiply anything with you know quant uh, qualitative information. So, it should be very quantitative in nature. So, that, mean that, that means we have to transfer the entire structure into quantitative form so that the structure can be built properly. Okay. Okay, so now uh, uh, there are several structures which we have highlighted, uh, uh, which we have highlighted. Uh, then uh, uh, here, uh, here uh, I will start with that particular uh, uh, generalized formula. Then we will discuss a part of it. Okay, so uh, y equal to summation beta zero plus summation beta i x i i equal to one to n plus summation delta d i. Uh, uh, in fact, I will call it here uh, uh, alpha i, okay. let us say alpha i then d i, okay. alpha i d i, uh, alpha i, alpha i d i, okay. this is alpha i d i. So, that means plus u. So, this is the general fertilized formula. So, here uh, or, or else, uh, uh, okay. let me first write x is the a vector of explanatory variables, it is x is a vector of uh, uh, independent variables, okay. then beta is unknown parameters, unknown parameters, okay. so then uh, gamma alpha is also unknown parameters, then d is the dummy variables, dummy variable of i numbers, dummy variable. of ith number. Okay. So, this is how the entire structure. So, now if I will put in different way uh, in a explicit format, then it will be coming like this y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 continue beta k x k plus uh, gamma uh, alpha 1 d 1 plus alpha 2 d 2 plus alpha k d k okay, plus u. Okay, this is how the general formula. So, we start with a particular case. So, particular case is a let us say uh, let us say like this. Let us say uh, y equal to uh, beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta uh, d 1 uh, uh, d 1 uh, uh, or, or you can say alpha 1 alpha 1 d 1 okay, alpha 1 d 1 plus u. Okay. This is how you have to say let us say here d 1 is the d 1 is the dummy variable dummy variable. You remember one thing when you will introduce dummy variable in the system you must know the systematic approach behind this dummy variable or systematic way you are introducing the dummy variable. So, that means, there should be proper a shape or structure as a result you are using the dummy variable. So, without having proper structure, without proper knowledge, without proper setup, you should not introduce blindly. Okay? So, you must have complete or thorough knowledge. For instance, uh, let us say, I, I means the dummy variable uh, sometimes mathematical it is very difficult to convince properly. So, you can convince if you uh, highlight what is exactly y and what is exactly x and what is exactly dummy. So, that means uh, in this particular structures, in this particular structure, so we have variables y, x1 and d1. So, okay, these are the variables and our requirement is the beta 0 head, okay, beta 1 head and alpha 1 head. Okay. So, these are our requirement. So, we have y x 1 d 1. So, that means by default it is looks like a 
trivariate econometric modeling, trivariate econometric modeling, which we have discussed long back. Okay. But the way we discuss long back, it is the setup where all these variables are quantitative in nature. So, that means only quantitative information are uh, uh, available for y, x1 and x2. Okay. So, now here you have y information, it is quantitative, x information, it is quantitative, but d information which is qualitative, qualitative, qualitative and qualitative. Okay. So, now it is against the earlier discussion that means, uh, in the earlier discussion of trivariate where only uh, uh, three variables are there and all these three variables have quantitative information. So, then you can go for its estimation, but you know when all these information are qualitative then obviously, it is very uh, uh, very difficult to handle. So, you have to transfer it to a proper set. So, let us assume that for simplicity we you you we you say this is y equal to say earnings ok y equal to earnings ok x1 represents uh, your you can say uh, uh, income levels ok ok the, the in other way we will put it this is y equal to saving and x1 is the earnings and d1 is the genders ok so, let us we start with the, uh, the problem is that we like to know what is uh, say what is the impact of earnings on saving the function is the, what is the impact of earnings uh, sorry uh, yes earnings impact on saving. So, that means if I put y equal to function of x 1 here like this. So, that means y is the saving and x 1 is the earnings. So, this is how the entire structure. So, that means uh, we have earning information, we have saving information that is purely quantitative in nature. So, we like to know what is the impact or association between earnings and uh, savings. Okay. So, is it positive or is it negative or if it is positive or negative. So, which cause and which effect, but uh, we have already highlighted here which cause and which effect that means saving is the effect and the earnings is the cause. That means, we would like to know whether earnings is the most important factor which can influence saving. Okay. Saving of a particular person or particular household or you can say particular economy. So, now saving depends upon what is the income earnings or income level of a particular person, particular state or particular uh, household. Okay. So, uh, whatever we have to represent. So, so you must have saving information if it is say house household wise information. So, that means, you take 100 uh, households information, household 1, household 2, household 3, then every household you ask what is the income level, total annual income, then obviously, uh, you ask what is the total saving annual and that is annual saving, then you start regressing. Okay. So, the moment you will regress, then it will give you signal whether, whether you know say earnings has a significant impact on uh, saving or not, but most of the instances earning has a significant impact. So, this is all theoretical knowledge till you have to verify through econometric analysis. So, in that case you have to build a model. So, building model is a summation uh, y equal to beta 0 plus beta uh, 1 x 1. So, that is the information with you. So, you have to just estimate properly. So, this is one way to handle this issue. So, now I will add another variable in the system. So, what is the gender impact on uh, you know saving uh, in this particular setup. So, that means I will introduce another variable say gender. So, what is the gender impact on saving? Okay. So, that means, uh, gender will uh, go to uh, independent side right side then uh, and we like to know what is the gender influence on uh, saving. So, obviously, if I will integrate then the saving is a function of earnings and genders. Okay. Earnings and gender. So, that is how we have to represent. So, now the moment we will put earnings as a fun, uh, earnings and gender as a uh, you know uh, factors which can be considered as a for uh, considered uh, for the influence of saving, then we will uh, highlight the model structure is like this. Okay. So, now uh, here if we will introduce you see the dummy variable by name or you know by indication will give you the setup. Okay. The setup in the dummy variable the setup is very important factor. For instance, here gender is there. So, gender means by default uh, you must have theoretical knowledge to bring the setup. So, gender means uh, there is no problem at all. So, you know gender uh, how many ways gender can be 
a, a represented. So, here gender can be represented in two different ways. So, male and female. So, obviously, so in that case, so gender range will be 0 and 1. Okay. Gender range will be 0 and 1. So, that means, uh, we will fit this particular models. So, where d i is a proxy of 1 and 0 say. Okay. 1 is for male and 0 is for female. Okay. So, this is how the, uh, the constant I have to add in this particular system. Then I will go for its estimation. Otherwise, it is not possible to go for its estimation. Okay. So, I will, I will, I will, I, I, in fact, I will highlight in other way around. Okay. So, let me highlight here uh, 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 once again. Uh, here is y equal to, uh, let us say, uh, beta 0, beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus d into uh, alpha 0 plus alpha 1 x plus u. So, this is another way we can represent also. So, uh, we ha we have written here so, uh, first format beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus you can say gamma 1 d 1. Okay. So, now I am putting like this way. So, this is another type of model so which is used as a uh, dummy. Okay. So, anyway, so now here d is recognized as a 1 and 0 and y is the earnings, uh, oh no, y is the saving, y is the savings and uh, x 1 is the earnings okay. and d is the gender, d is the gender. Okay. So, now uh, if, if d equal to 1, then the model will be structured as a y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus d. Okay. So, gamma uh, alpha 1 into 1 okay, plus u. Okay. Otherwise, if you will put in that particular format, then it will be y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 okay, plus uh, uh, d equal to 1. Okay. 1 into 1 into alpha 0 plus alpha 1 x okay so this is another form of models okay uh, then you see here if d equal to 1 then this 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 will come like this so now what you have to do so you simplify so y equal to that means this is alpha 1 and this is simply alpha 0 plus alpha 1 x okay so y equal to y equal to um, beta 0 uh, plus alpha 1 plus beta 1 x 1 plus u. Okay. So, this is how. So, e of y of 1 you can say d equal to 1 is equal to simply beta 0 plus alpha 1. Okay. Similarly, if I will put d equal to 0, then uh, okay. Similarly, if I will simplify this one, then it will be y equal to beta 0 plus alpha 0 okay, plus beta 1 plus alpha 1 into x 1 okay, plus u. Is it okay? This is how the structure is all about. Then I will put another, uh, another structure here. So, now for this, uh, okay, I will put it here only. Uh, okay. So, now uh, if 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 uh, d equal to zero, then obviously y equal to beta zero plus beta one x one plus alpha one into zero plus u. So it will be equal to beta zero plus beta one x one. Okay, plus u. So this is simple bivariate trigonometric modeling. This is simple bivariate trigonometric modeling. And in uh, other way, if you put like this way, then y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus 0 into uh, alpha 0 plus alpha 1 x okay, or x 1, so, right. Uh, uh, this is in fact x 1, right. This is x 1, uh, uh, okay, plus u. So, obviously, so y equal to simply beta 0 plus beta 1 x x 1 plus u. 
So, E upon y where d equal to 0 is equal to simply beta 0. So, that means, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, other y e y upon d equal to 1 is e beta 0 plus uh, plus uh, b, uh, alpha 1 alpha 1 or uh, yes alpha 1. So, now uh, I, uh, this is the case where d equal to 0 this is the case where d equal to 1. So, that means the influence factor between male and female is the alpha 1. So, that is how the structure of domain variable uh, uh, is uh, that is the structure of domain variable. So, domain variable will give lots of hints or indication how a variable can be considered as a proxy variable and how that proxy variable can be used to estimate that particular econometric volume. So, that is how it is a very interesting technique. So, that means you start with a variable qualitative way, then you transfer into quantitative way, then you have to go for its estimation, then you come back to original position, we like, uh, then you highlight what is the particular, I means in this particular case gender impact on that particular, you can say savings uh, and earnings. So, this is how the uh, domain variable is, uh, you can say uh, examined or you can say utilized in the econometric modeling. Uh, in the next class, we will discuss the detailed setup of you can say econometric modeling with the, uh, some examples and also we will discuss the other part of the uh, domain modeling that is you can say uh, qualitative response domain uh, dependent uh, econometric modeling. So, with this we will conclude this session. Have a nice day. Thank you.